the deep talk with mr henry i hope your sunday is okay thank you so much for watching the deep talk thank you for the feedback our subscribing there our travel online thank you so much those of you that are watching us on galaxy tv thumbs up for you my name is mr henry and the name of the show is the deep talk i'm with a i'm with a friend i'm with somebody that has in one way or the other mentored me in one way or the other that has become family that has become very close every time i call him he picks my call um a lot of people don't know it omuntu ali very social omuntu i know mutimo mugabi omuntu akute kutalanta is in jaulo in uh in so many ways he's been here for a minute and he's still here by the way <laughs> do you know that your look every time keeps you look younger than the way you looked last year <laughs> Yo, yo, greetings everybody watching Deep Talk. I don't know it's a regional, real and proper Mr. Beanie Gun Talk. But yeah, but yeah, it was so well, uh, chilling with my bro, Henry. Thank you for making the time. You know, always, bro. I think the last the, the last time I saw you, Wali Waka Dango Vawedu. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there's a situation that happened when you were... Uh, on that on that trip to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Yeah, sure. Aba mo ba bi tegera, ba na te ba bi tegera. Bolu njio mania kasera kai sewoko ne katuta ndikira wondoza. Yeah, um, Abu Dhabi, Abu and, Dhabi. Uh, and Dubai. Mm. So I had um I had shows to do in 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 Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Before that, you were in Canada, by the way. Was yeah, it yeah. Canada? Yeah, it was Canada. Manatava kunyonyon. Okay, can you do it? Okay, Muraba. Yes. Yeah, we give thanks. You know, we've been yeah. put in the work, and yeah, it's time to elevate it to yeah. the next level. You know. Mm. Yeah, man. So, I went for shows. Dubai was okay. Mm. Then after that, we had an extra show in Abu Dhabi, which didn't go so fine. The way. We anticipated it to be because Abu Dhabi is not that crowded, and mm. it's a very chill place. It's just basically official business, not mm. entertainment. Mm. So we had the show. Me, I wasn't like directly involved with the, with the promoters because mm. it was a third party in between the another promoter who took me. Mm. So they contacted that the other promoter who was in Abu Dhabi. Oh, yeah. And this promoter happens to be called um, Wolf, is it? Yes, Wolf. Mm. Yeah, so we did the show. I was supposed to perform at around um, 3? PM AM. 3 AM in the morning, that's night time, same way. Mm. And um, I gave that, that promoter still happens to be a DJ at the same time. So I gave him my playlist and at that time of the performance, he didn't show up. So they came for me from the hotel room, and it was kind of messy when, when I went on stage. The guy who played for me was a Moroccan. Oh. He was putting pitch in the music. He wasn't even well conversant with what was going on. He was just, he had to fill in for this guy. Mm. So I had to perform, regardless. So after the show, I didn't know there was something that was happening already at the doorway, like with the gate collections between the promoters. So they had some little bit of wrangles between themselves. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, I didn't mind about that because it wasn't my business. So mm -hmm. I had to just stand aloof from that and just do my thing, just focus on the funds and make sure that everything is going on well. Because for me, what is most important is my people, the people that I perform for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So after that, we left. Yeah. And I, 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 I didn't go back to the hotel room. I decided to move around with the team that I came with. Mm. So we left these two guys to, to sort out themselves so that we can go back to Dubai. Mm. So remember, this was, I told you I was supposed to perform at 3. I ended up performing at 4 in the morning. And then after the show, these guys were looking for this mm. guy. He was nowhere to be found. So the promoter. Yeah, the other mm. promoter. So he decided for us to, you know, like, take a trip around the town and have some fun around. So 
it so happened that I phoned this guy around, I think it was around six mm. in the morning coming to seven. Mm. And we were almost on our way. Actually, we were all in the car going back to, 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 to Dubai. Because du Dubai. Mm. we had already checked out from the hotel. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So these guys, um, the first thing this promoter did was to come and apologize to me. He actually happens to be a Mtoro. Okay. And I'm a Mtoro somewhere, so we were speaking the same language. He came and told me, I'm sorry, you know, something happened to me. I was caught by police and, and they took away the money that I had. I'm like, man, that money kind of thing is not my thing. You're supposed to discuss it with your brother then. Mm. For me, my only thing is that you never played my playlist the way you were supposed to be played. And that's much more important to me because I do this music for the people. You know, the money can, can get messy, but at the end of the day, it's still them who paid, you know. Mm. So he apologized, he said, I'm sorry. And I was like, okay, cool, man. We even shook hands, and I went back to the car to sit. So they, they, these guys were, they were not really satisfied with his, with his story of saying like the police mm. got him and mm. took away the money from him, because I mean this is a derby. There is nothing like you can bribe police. Oh yeah. Yeah. No matter how much money, you can't bribe the police. Mm. So they had his bag that had um, his equipment, the DJ equipment. Mm. So one promoter called Dithan from, 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 du from Dubai mm. told him, um, you come to Dubai and we sort ourselves. If After confiscating things. Yes, yes, yes. So it was like, I think that's where the, the misunderstandings came from because the driver was trying to drive off the next thing I was hearing is people knocking the car from behind. And when I looked through the window, this Dithan guy was already down there kicking him. And um, yeah, I jumped out, like to hope, try sort the situation for these guys to stop fighting. And that's where everything started from. Yeah, because it didn't. The fight didn't even take two minutes. It didn't even last for a minute, actually, because mm -hmm. they had already boxed this guy. And then I came. I don't know who pushed me. Also, found myself down on ground, and everyone scattered, and they left. They ran away. Everyone ran away, and the driver drove off, and um, we all moved from there. So immediately after, like I think the next two minutes police had already come on, on the side, this, yeah. but when we had left. Mm. So we didn't take it that serious. When we left, was was just vibes of everyone was pissed off with what happened. So this, these promoters are saying, yo, we have to come for them, you know, blah, blah, you know, stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, we had to, you know, find our way back because the driver had already left. Yeah. So me, I, I got in, in a taxi with my wife and some other lady. And then we went somewhere. We had to go somewhere safe. That's what happened. For the f that, that was on the 8th in the morning. So we left and went to do, we went to Dubai thinking everything was done. So I had to be in Dubai for a couple of days. I had video shoots to do. I had some connections like to link. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I had plans of um, of doing my festival in in Abu Dhabi and Dubai. <coughs> in after after I had done these shows, cause I saw like Gontak has a big fan base mm. down there, and there's so many of my friends that had left UG long time ago that mm. came for the show and it was really a surprise for me like yeah. all these guys stand up so yeah that happened and i didn't i didn't know like it was that serious so i was in dubai for all this while and these guys they had their they had their beef you know like it's a lot of beef between ugandans in in dubai and um, the in the uae it's very disappointing mm. actually like 
they fight. To my assumption, it is like we are few, we are few Ugandans who are living in the UAE, like as Ugandans. Yeah. And to the best of my knowledge, I think the best thing to do is for people to work together and come together and mm. build it up because it's very few of them. You get it. But the fights are too much. The beef is too much, which is very, very disappointing. Everyone has something to say about someone. Even if you find people together, if this one moves away, the <laughs> next man has something to say about this one. So I don't know, man, how they actually live that kind of life. So we did what we were supposed to do, and on the 22nd, I booked my tickets with my, with my baby, and then we had to come back to Uganda after doing the work that I was supposed to do down there. So at the airport, she went through the immigration first, and they couldn't go through the immigration. They told me you have... Were they the self-checking immigrations or these other ones that actually have people? You know where you put in your passport? Oh, yeah, the self-checking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Mm. So there was an X for me. For you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought it was something small, so... They After said, they tell you, go now this side and you go yeah, to the other guy. Yeah, you go to the immigration <laughs> office. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So they told me, go to the immigration office. Yeah. There's something small, you know, like... Okay, it's small. Yeah. Something so small, colors you, you, you go. Tell and you can see. Yeah. So when I went there, it was actually a, like a line of about like five people. Mm. So I saw these guys going in and coming out. So I thought it was going to be the same thing for me. Mm. So when I got in, this guy um, looked at my passport and put it on the side and then made a phone call. And they told me, sit there. So that's when I knew. <laughs> yeah, that's when I knew. So some guy came, an Arab guy came, and then he told me, let's go this side, don't worry, it's something small to no finish. No problem, they can't even speak good Yeah, they English. can't speak English, you can't really explain yourself and mm. all of that. So when we went to the, the there is a police station, because we were using um, the mm. fly Dubai, Yeah. whatever. So we went to the police station, and um, there was a lady who checked in the system and said, you have, you have something in Abu Dhabi to finish. Call your people, tell them to come and pick you, because I had some hand luggage. Mm. Tell your people to come and pick your bags. We're taking you to Abu Dhabi. You have a case to finish. So I had to call my babe first, like, you know what, you have to go now. You sort of did, you made a decision then, then yeah, you, yeah. Have, you have to first go. Yeah, you have to first that go. That becomes in Charlie. Yeah, yeah. She had nowhere to stay behind. I know. Yeah, yeah. So I told her, now you have to go. Then I tried to call this promoter, like I've been called, because he escorted us up to that, mm. to the departures. Yes. And then he left before we went through the immigration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Of so course, because him. the immigration is way far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they told me, um, he told me, yes, I'm coming, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, okay, let me wait here. They took me to the cell. There is, the, there is a cell at the police station there. At that time, what is going through your head, Benny? <clears throat> at that time, I'm not thinking right. But um, I'm thinking of when they mentioned Abu Dhabi, you have something to finish in Abu Dhabi. I definitely knew it was about that fight. Yeah. Yeah, but I was confident in the beginning, knowing like, maybe I need to explain to someone I'm not the one who fought, man. These, mm -hmm. these are the two people who are fighting and I was trying to help them. So, that is 11 midday. You're still there? I'm still there. Up to 7. PM? PM. No one has come for you. No nothing. one has come for me, and I made calls to these guys. The promoters. Yes, the promoters. So that's when I knew, like, now I'm in for it. I'm on my own. Now. I'm on my own. But the good thing I had had stories about, because before I went, I didn't know things of 
how people are actually got from the airport mm. and how some people are even in even in overstay yes <clears throat> so i knew maybe these guys have something that's stopping them from coming to the police station they couldn't i don't come. know they are mm. they are they are criminal records or or anything so maybe they would have shown up if they were clean for me so now the next thing they had to transfer me from there to Abu Dhabi. So in the evening there is another police officer that was that that was supposed to take us to Abu Dhabi in that van. Mm. So there were some other here. people, yeah? There was one guy. I, I don't know whether he was a Moroccan or he was coming from mm. Russia, I'm not very sure, but yeah. there was some white guy there. In the next cell, everyone was in their own cell. Do you eat, do you <coughs> move, or you're in the cell? You're just in there. You didn't eat? That day, actually, I didn't eat. Jesus Christ. Yes, that day, from the airport, I didn't eat. So they took us to, they came and picked us, put us in that van. It had so m much AC. Definitely. Very cold. They tied my hands and my legs. What? Yeah. They tied you from inside the van? No, no. Yeah, yeah. From, ins from, yeah, from inside the van, you get in, then they, they put that, the chains here on your legs. They, are they like Mpingu or Babu no Tape? Sibu Tape. And Pingo Zebi Umezo Zenine Zechijigiri. So. It was very cold. It, was, it felt like it was a movie, man. Like I was dreaming because I only used to see these things in movies. Mm. Yeah, and you can't see where you're going. You can't see who are the people behind. It is all netted. So you're just moving with your things. I had my things and my passport. We left. Are you trying to make some phone calls there and then? Oh, the simu baji kujap. Net the simu bari baji nziriza whenever we could be in, in in transit. Okay. So what the first thing that I did, my phone was charged. Mm. I could switch it on whenever they give it to me, and communicate. Mm. Now we are moving from here. Mm -hmm. And whenever they we were taking it, I switch it off to keep the battery on. Yeah. So they took us somewhere, I thought we were already in Abu Dhabi, but it wasn't Abu Dhabi. Because I got to know in the morning it was a place called uh, Shalja. Yeah. I think something Shalja, like, something like that. Shalja, yeah. Yeah, a prison. So we slept there for that night. They threw you in the cell or you had like your own cell? Uh, no, it was now open. We have okay. found other people there and right. in their decas. So they did the checking whatever you register after they threw us in. So we found other people, but these guys, they, they are like dormitories. Mm. Yeah. Singe bia fe bia one. Uh-uh. Zili zili inga dormitories, and you even have a blanket. So I slept there. The next morning, I found some people in the cell, and there is a Nigerian guy who like was nice to me. He was called Chris. Mm. He told me I lost my my number plate. This is why I'm here. But these guys have extorted a lot of money from me. Blah blah. I was hearing figures of money, and I'm like, what? Because mm. for him it was up to like. At that time already he had used like. Fourteen M. And yet it was his, it wasn't his mistake, someone just took the number plate from behind, like how they do it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, in the morning, the officers came, they read a list and my name was there. So they said, you come, get your things. They, I guess again, put us in another van. They took us to Abu Dhabi. Abu uh, Dhabi, Dubai. From that cell to Abu Dhabi, how many hours do you think? Um, uh, from that cell to Abu Dhabi, it took us like an hour. Mm. Like an hour on the road. So I went back online. I tried to communicate now. This time around, I told them now it's official. I've been arrested. So you have to, you know. But 
all these prisons I was going to, they're telling me you have to go where your your case is. So mm. there's nothing we can really do for you. Yeah. And there is no one to explain to here. And actually, your situation is a court case. So we went to a, uh, a police station called CID in Abu Dhabi. I was there for one day and a half. Mm. They transferred me again. Yeah. Nothing, no questioning, no nothing, just checking. Transfer, transfer, transfer. transfer. Yeah. So they took me to another police station called Arauda Police Station, still in Abu Dhabi. So Arauda Police Station is where the case was. I think that those are the police guys who were on scene. Yeah. Yeah, so one guy came and asked me, why did you fight with? How did they know it was you? Oh, Through cameras? Yes. Oh. These guys Camera. have cameras everywhere. So there is an Arab guy who came and asked me, why did you fight with Omar? Omar is that promoter guy. So uh, I, I told him I did not fight with Omar. I was just trying to, to, to help the situation. He was like, I have the cameras. Yes, you are there with your wife and they boxed you. What, what, what were you fighting for? And I'm like, no. I'm not the one who was fighting. If you had cameras, you should have seen everything that happened there from the beginning. He was like, okay, now you have to make your statement. The, the, the judge will talk to you in the evening. So I was there around, I think, around 8 in the night. They came for me from the cell. Then they took me, I sat um, in front of a computer with a screen, and then someone appeared. On the screen? Yes. <laughs> the judge wasn't physical? No, he wasn't physical, and the screen asked me. He was still the details. Um, I had Arab, to make Arab, him what yeah. I, yes. you had to ma I had to make my statement, to, to write my statement, how many people were you, this happened here and here and here. Why did these guys fight? Why did you get yourself involved and all of that? When you're going through all that, were they biased by the way you look, the tattoos and everything? Or Yeah, I, okay? I, in the beginning, because I'm a black person, they were biased, but what attracted them was my hair. Mm. So everyone was looking at my hair like the police guys could ask me, this is your hair. You're a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I think that kind of, you know, mm -hmm. eased it for me in yeah. a way, so... Like, actually, there were, there were people who would come to just look at my hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and <laughs> then they go. Mm. So, I made my statement. They told me, you have to wait. You talk to another judge tomorrow. So... Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. So on that fourth day is when they came and called me from the cell. They told me, pay 5,200 and go. Did I? Yes. That is 5M. Yes. Mm. 5.2. 5,200. So I had to first make calls there and then me, I thought it was done. I had to pay. 5,200 and then I go, not knowing it was big. <coughs> so um, we had to make calls. I think when the, the, by the time the money came in, it was already late, so I had to sleep. Again. To sleep there again. And some guy came for me while I was there. So remember I was communicating to these promoters in Dubai thinking they would show up at mm. any time there. I was giving them updates and they have taken me here. Mm -hmm. The best thing I could do is try to read, okay, ask all, also these other prisoners, mm. where are we? So when they would tell me where we are, I send these guys a message, we're at this police station, we're at this police station. So ultimately I gave up because I, was, I wasn't seeing these guys showing up. Mm. So while I was still there, the police came for me and asked me, do you have relatives here? Because mm. there are people who have come to see you. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't want to say no. I said yes, because I didn't know who had come to see me. I thought they were these promoters. 
So this there's a guy called Kevin. He came in with some lady, said, Hey Bini, I'm Kevin and there is a lady who has sent me called Ethel. Ethel was um I think the the person who worked on our visas. Mm-hmm. She has a company that site that works on visas and travel company. And then I didn't know Kevin at that time. Don't worry, we're handling the situation. You're gonna be out. So Kevin was very helpful to me at that point of time. Mm. So he left that night. I, I gave him my wife's number. Mm. I told him do what? Contact her and then if just since you're here, you can be the medium of communication that we're going to be using and yeah. it was to it was a good thing that he could come at the police station so and I update you. Yes, and mm. update me. So I knew like this he was a clean guy mm. because most of the people fear coming to the police stations because yeah. you have to register in your of course your id mm-hmm. so through your id they check all your <laughs> records your records so i was like cool he came that first day even in the morning he was the one now helping because they had sent money on my phone we had to remove it from my phone to put it on on the card because these guys don't take cash yeah yeah you have to use your your, your card mm. and my dfcu card wasn't working that side so they had to put it on his card mm. and then come and pay here so when he left i think uh, there was also something with his card and then he found another guy to help him there's another guy a blogger called josh likings mm. so on the second day they came two guys with G- this josh and josh was one of the guys who made them um, the first video when this fight happened while we were there and I I watched his interview I was talking about how these guys have been doing this these things mm-hmm. and how it is not cool like the promoters need to you know like organize themselves because yeah. they are they are overdoing this kind of stuff like playing artists and all of that so it so happened this is the guy I'm seeing here and it is the guy who is willing to help us to use his card because it had the money yeah to pay and I come out so I built trust on two guys Kevin and uh, and Josh Likings yeah so we paid the money mm. and we went out they didn't give us like anything they told me they wrote for me on the the on on some note like you go to this typing center mm. Mushrif Mall go to the typing center put in your case number they will remove your what? Your, your travel case. ban. Yeah, your travel ban. Yeah, because I had a travel ban, I could not fly out. Mm. So when we went to the typing center, they told me you have to see the judge on the 19th. Which Man. date was that? That was on the 20... They tell 26th, you on... 26th or 20th. That you have to see him on the 19th of Feb. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> ah! I was feeling more Yeah, I was like. Of the Mukomera, that 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 was when I got a got um, was it seven days? Six? It was five days. Five days, yeah. 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 Now you're out. You think you can travel? Yes, because the next thing I was thinking of is just going back home. Of flying. course, it's done. Yo, they told me nineteenth. I was like, what am I gonna be doing here? This was abrupt. I'm like, no, it can't happen. No, 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 no. This is so unfair. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, man, the system here. This is how these guys do their things. Yeah. And remember, these guys, they don't say much. They just tell you what you're supposed to know. They go. The next ABC person comes there. on the counter. And yeah. So they gave, they told, we, we, we left that Mushrif Mall and went to court immediately. It was a Friday, I remember. Trying to explain or something. Yes, yeah. yes. So when we went to court, they told us, no, you cannot see the judge just like that. You have to go and apply and pay. If you want to extend your days, mm. you have to pay. And the judge will review whether to accept or, or not. not. But after you've paid. But after you've paid 1.5. So from there, we started now 
making calls had to go to the embassy ugandan embassy yes the ugandan embassy we went to the ugandan embassy and um they told us um we have to talk to eddie because we have the uganda musician association yeah. Oh, yeah yeah so with that i thought okay now maybe there's that's the board that the government knows because i didn't mention anything about that they didn't yeah. mention uma they didn't mention any other thing they just told me this is where you're going to be helped from as a musician as a musician so the story is long. We'll be right back. Let's take a quick breather. For now, Chai, for now, Mazi, it's the deep talk. My name is Mr. Henry. This is the exclusive of what happened with Biniganta in the UAE. Toval. Deep Talk with Mr. Henry.